Hello, in this video I want to discuss the question of where on the PPF will the economy decide to produce? So the PPF of course shows all combination of two goods that an economy can produce given its resources and technology, uh, but where exactly will the economy choose to produce? So which combination of the two goods B and A along this line Will the economy choose to produce? That is, where on this line will we be? Well, it turns out that uh, that answer depends on the preferences of the people living in this economy. And if you have preferences, we can, of course, create a utility function. And in this video, I'm going to use the following Cub Douglas standard uh, utility function right here. And I'm also going to use all uh, these, uh, uh, the same kind of constraints in terms of our resources is going to be 100 workers and our technology is going to be that the unit labor requirement for A is 2, that is to take 2 workers, L, to produce 1 unit of A. And the uh, unit labor requirement for good B will be 4, it takes 4 L to produce 1 B. And of course, uh, consumers in this economy will have to make a decision uh, that optimizes its their utility given a constraint. And of course, the constraint is the PPF here. So we are constrained by our resources as well as our technology, the A's here. All right, so then again, where on this PPF will you be? Uh, let me maybe just... Uh, I realized I didn't write in here. So, of course, uh, given these uh, numbers, we know that the maximum amount of A that we could produce is equal to 50. So, this point right here, this intercept is 50. And the maximum amount of good B that we can produce is 25 so we have our 25 unit intercept over there and the question is where on this uh, PPF the straight line between those two intercepts will we be you know graphically there will be some indifference curve that is a curve that describes our utility function and uh, you know we would expect you know there's of course indifference curves everywhere and we would expect that a consumer would like to reach as high of an indifference curve as possible. So the answer is going to be, you know, wherever the indifference curve is tangent to the uh, PPF here, the budget const or the, the resource constraint, if you will. And uh, of course, the slope of the, the indifference curve is going to be the marginal rate of substitution. The slope of the PPF is the opportunity cost or the marginal rate of transformation. So that's going to give us the, the you know, the, I don't know, the condition, if you will, that would determine where on the PPF we want to be. But let's do an example. So here I have set up the example. It's a constraint optimization problem where we want to try to maximize uh, the utility of this economy's uh, citizens subject to the constraint uh, which is based on the number of resources as well as the technology in these and I'm going to just use the numbers I, I just did so ALA is equal to 2 and the unit labor requirement of good B is 4 and we have 100 workers when I solve this one here today, I'm just going to go ahead and use the substitution method. Of course, we could use the uh, Lagrangian or we could even use the shortcut method if we really wanted to. But let's just, uh, for fun, use the, the substitution method. So I'm just going to substitute out for good B. So I'm going to solve for B here. So I'm going to divide, I'm going to move the B so it's alone. And then I'm going to have everything else on the other side. So QB equals 25 minus 0.5 QA. I'm going to then pl plug that into my utility function. 
So we have QA to the power 0.5. And then I'm going to replace this one for my QB. And now I have utility as a function of only one variable, A. So I'm going to take the derivative of U with respect to QA, and I'm going to set that equal to zero. The derivative here is the derivative of the first term multiplied by the second term plus the derivative of the second term and then we, we can't forget that we have to do the take the derivative of the inside and then multiply by the first term and I'm going to set that equal to zero. Um, I'm going to move the second this part here over to the other side so I can get rid of the negative sign there and then I'm going to of course uh, simplify so let me just uh, carefully write this one more time You can see we can get rid of one of the point fives here. I'm going to cross multiply the ones with the negative exponents here. And what I get then is 25 minus point five QA is equal to point five QA. I can then putting all the QAs on one side, we have that QA is going to be equal to 25. And in order to find QB, I'm going to plug that back into our original constraint, which is 25 minus 0.5 times the QA, which is 25. So that's going to be 25 minus 12.5, which is 12.5. So this is our optimal solution. Where on the PPF will we be? Well, we will be at the production point where A, where the economy is producing 25, and since there is no trade, they must be consuming 25 of good A, and the economy is producing 12.5 of good B, and hence consuming that. So if I just quickly draw my PPF to see where we will be exactly, we had, of course, uh, our two intercept. 25 and 15 and what I just found is our optimal point on this which means that the indifference curves indifference curve given our utility function will be tangent at that point this is where the the moderator transformation will be equal to the moderator substitution all right that's actually how we find where on the PPF we would be given that we have no trade at this point.